Hello and welcome to the third and last section of our tutorial. Now we're going to show you the post processing. After our simulation has finished successfully, it is now time for the post processing using Paraview. I have already opened Paraview and now I can load the simulation data from the output files. For what follows, it is convenient to use the autoconvert property setting. This facilitates the usage of some filters in Paraview. For first impression of our simulation results, we can have a look at the evolution of the displacement field. For this, we rescale the displacement over the entire time span and then watch the evolution. We can see clearly that the displacements are concentrated in the sediment layers, whereas the rock bed behaves rather stiff, just as we had assumed before. Now let's refine the post-processing a little bit. In the top window, we can for example leave the material domains and the finite element mesh for comparison. And in the bottom window, we can now investigate the deformed contour of our geometry. As a preliminary step, we have to calculate the three-dimensional displacement vector, which is simply the product of the coefficients with the corresponding base vectors. Having this three-dimensional vector, we can now apply the warp by vector filter with the displacement vector and the scale factor of 25. Furthermore, we can plot the stresses on this deformed contour, for example the shear stresses. Additionally, I would like to plot the isobars from the hydrostatic pressure. For this, we again need a calculator in order to get the hydrostatic pressure, which we can calculate from the trace of the stress tensor. Now we can apply a contour filter where already the pressure is chosen and we have to specify the number of isolines. We can make it for example 40. Now we overlay the shear stresses and thus we can watch the evolution of both the hydrostatic pressure and the shear stresses during the glacier advance. And as we can see, the glacier not only induces a pressure, it also causes shearing of the sediment layers, such that shear stresses of different sign emerge under the sediment layers. Instead of further interpreting these interesting results, we would now like to show you another step in post-processing. Before continuing, you may want to save the current state in order that you can return to it later. Quite often, you might be interested in the evolution of certain quantities at some location, which is not necessarily a node. For this, we can use the probe location tool in Paraview. In our example, we can choose a point which is exactly at the interface between the sediment layer 3 and the rock bed. When we apply the probe location, automatically the spreadsheet view pops up and there we can choose this point again and now plot the selection over time. Let us focus on the strains now. As we can see, the horizontal strain, means the strain in the x-direction, changes the sign at the interface, where the point is strained back and forth. 
Considering the vertical strain, we see a monotonous behavior due to the increasing glacial load. The strain in that direction is zero as expected due to the plane strain conditions, but we observe pronounced shear strains at the interface consistently with our shear stresses that we had seen before. At this stage, we are done with post-processing in our teaching example. To recap briefly, you have seen the complete workflow from the input data, geometry and material via meshing, the conversion to VTU format, including the boundary conditions and the collection into a project file. We ran OpenGeoSys and had a look at the results with Paraview. Finally, we would like to thank Professor Nagel and our colleagues from the Institute for Geotechnics, our project partners from the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research, the DFG for funding, and we thank you for watching. You will find all the files we used so far on the OpenGeoSys website under Tools and Workflows. Good luck! Glück auf und bis bald aus Freiberg!